Hey guys, Hillside Gardener back at you. Uh, just a quick update to show you how fast things can change. Uh, we've had so much rain here lately. Uh, my squash and zucchini plants are going crazy. Yeah, about uh, last year, I don't know what happened if it was just too wet. We set a record for annual rainfall last year. It rained nonstop every day in the zucchini. They didn't like that. So uh, I ended up with zero, yes, zero zucchinis. I didn't think it was possible to screw it up, but they just didn't like it. Didn't do well at all. So this year I was bound and determined. I'm going to grow zucchini this year, and it's going to happen. I did not expect it to be this great. Uh, all the soil amendments, the compost, the uh, warm weather, humidity, everything was working out just perfect. I'm going to get in close here, guys, and show you uh, how much things can change in just one day. Yeah, so this morning I checked these plants, and this was not that big. I know people say zucchini, you can probably sit there and set a timer and watch them grow. Uh, if you've never grown zucchini before, it is true. Now these are the gray zucchini. Um, I think they have a much better taste than the standard, just the dark green uh, the zucchini you probably find in the grocery stores or whatever. But uh, check this guy out over here. This is in one day as well. I swear it was not this big. This is in one day. It has double, tripled in size. And there's a couple down there that are even bigger than this. So yeah, this just goes to show you how much zucchini you can produce in a small area and just how fast they grow. I mean, look at these, look at the results. But look right back in here too. Never, not everything's a success. Right there, see it rotting off? Uh, too much moisture and your zucchini will rot like that. You can kind of tell like right, right in there. So yeah, a lot of excess moisture will cause these things to rot off, which you don't want that. Got some basil going down in here too. I'll show you a close up there. Just the yellow squash. This is another variety. Some people like the yellow squash. I do prefer the zucchini, but I know my grandparents love the yellow squash. So I always try to grow a little extra for them. <laughs> so yeah, uh, let me show you one other thing that's not squash or zucchini related, but uh, bear with me. All right, so this is my first year uh, attempting to grow cabbages. And this guy, uh, the head is starting to grow, firming up. It's really awesome but uh, something happened the other day and I got a picture of it uh, I didn't get it on video because it happened too quick but true story I came out here with some bug spray and uh, you know you can tell your cabbages right here you start getting some damage get the holes from the slugs but the worst thing if you get these uh, green cabbage worms will just absolutely decimate your your crops so I was just about to spray and there was something moving and right from down here, crawled out a wasp. It was a uh, parasitic wasp, which are a very good thing for your garden. And little did I know, it was pulled out a cabbage worm. And I proceeded to sit here and just watch, uh, watch the uh, wasp eat this entire worm. It was the coolest thing ever. Uh, I did not have my phone on me, or else I would have uh, tried to record it. But uh, yeah, I went and got my camera afterwards and got a picture of it before it flew away, just so I could. Uh, prove it because people did not believe me but yeah so cabbage uh cabbage does have many many predators that try to attack it but as long as you have plenty of beneficial uh, plants around i think i showed a video of this uh this rue is actually kind of past its flowering stage but it attracted tons and tons of uh beneficial wasps which help patrol your garden and uh take care you know of the pest yeah all right so uh let me show you a little something else for the update video. Okay, so these are my potatoes. Um, and I swear I walked by the other day and I could actually smell potatoes. It, I swear, it's the weirdest thing ever. It was like the starchy kind of smell and I figured that a raccoon or possum or someone had gotten here and dug around and dug up a potato, halfway ate it and just, you know, wasted it all. But luckily they, they didn't. So I was just kind of snooping around because uh, the theme of this year's garden is just trying new things and trying to grow stuff I haven't grown before. Let's see if I can find it again. Where, oh, where are you at? Well, I can't find it right at this moment. Of course, I should have planned this out a little bit better. But there are baby potatoes. I saw them, and now I can't find them. Oh, there it is. Okay. So, let me zoom in right here. See it? Sort of, kind of. Yeah. Baby potato right there, guys. So, yeah, recycled kitchen scrap potatoes starting to produce some fruit. Sorry about the quality. This is kind of just 
off the cuff here. Didn't really plan a thing out. I just wanted to show you some stuff in the garden and kind of wander around and let whatever happens, happens. So I think sometimes you just have a little more fun that way. You don't need to script everything out in your life. Just let it happen. Uh, these are my carrots right here, doing super awesome and healthy. Uh, roots are not really developing yet, but they will be soon. Nice, healthy carrot plants right there. So, my little hoop house, makeshift uh, PVC pipes right there. Got the deer netting draped over top, has done a great job. Uh, curious deer, just come by, they'll nibble on your carrots, pull them out of the ground, not eat them, waste them, and uh, it's a loss, but you do what you gotta do. So if you have a deer problem with rabbits in your area, uh, I highly recommend getting your raised beds. Just getting some, uh, some rebar, put it in the ground, uh, roll this over the top of the PVC pipe, and uh, there you go. It's done pretty well keeping out the uh, keeping out the wildlife. These are my some of my onions right here, doing great. Some of the uh, romaine lettuce, which is uh, starting to kind of head up a little bit. So that's awesome before the hot weather really starts kicking in. Hopefully these guys form up because I do not want them to turn bitter or start bolting. There's some parsley and on the other end there's some more green onions. So there you go on that. All right, now let me show you uh, some peppers. All right guys, this is what you all came for inside the greenhouse. Uh, I don't know what to say. It's June 18th and I have peppers bigger now than I had last year at the end of the season. Uh, they are doing great. They haven't really started putting on fruits just yet as it is still pretty early. Bring it down here. There's a couple of onions starting to bulb up. But right down here, these are my lipstick peppers. These are a very sweet pepper. Really nice taste. Another lipstick pepper. Uh, fruits starting to form right there. This is Manganji pepper, the Japanese sweet pepper. I think this is just a uh, Hungarian wax or a banana pepper. I forgot which one it is. These are the ink and red drop peppers. This is a falling over myself in the greenhouse. It is way too crowded in here. And just look at this giant hedge of peppers. Over here, tomatoes. And look at this one cherry tomato plant that has decided to go out of control. It is all the way to the very top of the greenhouse wall already. It's covered in flowers, but it's like falling all over itself. I had no idea. I cannot anticipate having to stake up a 10 foot tall uh, plant, but inside this greenhouse is humid, it is hot. I keep it nice and watered. The soil in here is very fertile. So I don't know what else to tell you, but I've, this has turned into an absolute jungle. Got some more sweet peppers over here, mixed in. And under, on, on the understory, these are all beans. Right through there are all beans. I have a random tomato plant stuck in the corner. It is surviving. Got a couple cucumbers that are somewhere in there, which uh, try and do the multi-sowing, uh, polyculture type stuff. I don't know. But yeah, some of the leaves here I need to really focus on getting the blight. I really need to take care of this, pull these leaves off. I'm afraid this tomato plant in the corner is not doing too well and I'm probably gonna pull that one up. That was the boxcar willy pepper. I've never had any luck with ever and I stated earlier in one of my videos that this is the last year I'm going to try to grow the boxcar willy because I've never had any success and for whatever reason it does not grow for me um, so this is going to have to retire it I know a lot of people will love that pepper or a pepper tomato but uh not for me I can't do it here so this is the black crim this is the purple Cherokee both these are doing rocking and rolling there's not a single yellow leaf on here whatsoever so I can't change my growing conditions, so I need to grow plants that are adapted to my situation, which is something I can recommend for all you guys out there. Find things that work for you. Don't try to put the square peg in the round hole. If the plants don't grow for you because of your climate, maybe uh, it's too humid, maybe it's too dry, maybe this, the nights are too cold or the season's too short, find things that are suited to your area. Just because you want to grow something, we all have something we always want to try, you know, it's a... Uh, not always gonna work out for you. So anyways, I'm gonna show you one last thing. I grow peppers all the time. I've grown peppers for years, but I've never seen in my life leaves this gigantic on a pepper plant. I mean, this is the size of my hand. These leaves are bigger than my hands. Most pepper leaves, you know, you get something like this, which is compared to your hand, you know, something like this. That's about average, right? Not on this giant monster, these leaves are freaking huge, man. Oh, look at that. So this is one of my 
uh, special peppers. Hopefully, I'll I'll let you guys know a little bit more about it as it starts getting developed in the fruit. But luckily, got the first flowers on it right here. So it's a very healthy plant. It was attacked a lot by the aphids and some slugs, as you see the damage. But the new growth has pulled through. It looks perfectly healthy right there. Uh, the ladybugs seem to have done their work. And uh, just an update on that, I've released all the ladybugs in here, a uh, video to that, uh, a couple videos ago, uh, go check that out if you want to. But they've done a pretty well, pretty well uh, limiting the aphid population, but it had been getting so hot in this greenhouse, I had to open the vents, and I had to open the door to get some air circulation. The plants were totally stressed out, and well, ladybugs found other places to be other than here, but they did a great job. But if you look really carefully, yep. There's still a few that survived and are hanging out and like it in here. I did see an awesome sign. Um, I saw an aphid uh, baby. Uh, aphid baby. Ah, a ladybug. A baby ladybug. Uh, still in its uh, larva stage. Those things are aphid monsters. They are not going to stop eating. They're voracious. So, of course, it's not going to be on camera when I try to film. But they're at least happy enough to start making some babies in here. And hopefully those babies uh, stay around and this is their territory. I don't know enough about ladybugs to really make an educated guess, but I figured releasing so many ladybugs in this area, uh, the population just couldn't handle it. So they had to space out and find their own uh, territories, etc., etc. But, you know, there you go. So, uh, sorry, I thought I saw a bird trying to, never mind, I saw something shiny and I got distracted, I apologize. Anyways, that's just a quick update of the garden and things growing on. Hopefully you guys are doing well and your gardens are doing awesome. But I, like I said, I can't say enough how impressed I am with my garden so far this year. It is so far ahead of schedule with this greenhouse, how warm and awesome it is in here. We'll see you next time, guys, at the Hillside Garden. Please subscribe, like, tell your friends, and I'll bring you some more garden content. If there's anything uh, you have questions about, leave a little comment below. I'll be happy to answer it and get back to you. So uh, catch you next time. Bye.